guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Tuesday, November 29th. Uh, and it's been a minute. The last time we released an episode was 10 days ago. Uh, holiday season kind of kicked our butts a little bit, at least for me. I got busy. Uh, family stuff. I actually went to a high school reunion, which was weird. Uh, five-year reunion, which is kind of odd. I, I was going to go to the Celtics. The Celtics played the Mavs that day. So I was going to go to the game. Uh, but my buddies convinced me, hey, come Oof. to this. Well, it, I, I will say it was less for the That is the, the quickest tell them to screw that I would have ever no, no, had no. in my life. If it was just for the reunion, I probably would have said no. But like some of these guys like that, I'm still like good friends with. I hadn't seen in a while. So I wanted to, you know, see my friends uh, and we hang out, which was nice. It was nice to see my friends that I hadn't talked to in a couple months. months. Um, so it, it's fine. I got to rewatch the game when I got home the next or when I the next day. Uh, so I, I wasn't for those for those wondering, we were supposed to record that day, too. So Jack mm -hmm. blew me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my <laughs> fault. Hands up. Reunion. And I will say, though, it was weird. I walk in. Uh, it was at a brewery, right? So most of the people were, were drunk. Uh, one kid comes up to me. Shout out Ozzy, uh, who, for what it's worth, I don't think I said a single word to Ozzy in high school. Like, we didn't, we just weren't in the same friend group. Like, he's a nice guy. Like, I have no problem with it. But first thing, he comes up to me, he goes, yo, I love your podcast, man. And so Ozzy, fan of the show, I suppose. If you're listening to this, uh, I appreciate it. I thought that was, it, it was funny. Well, if he's not, uh, then he lied to, to you. See that. They yeah, and if he doesn't, face. then he will never hear this anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, if he doesn't cool. hear this, he should be dead to you because he lied to you straight to your face. <laughs> well, like I said, it, like it was like it was weird because I was just the Celtics guy there. Right. Like and for, for those listening, I've, I've definitely told Sam this before. I wasn't like a sports guy in high school. Right. Like, I, obviously, I like sports. I've always liked the Celtics and stuff, but I did music like I, I was four foot ten as a freshman in high school. So my, my hoop dreams uh, were never even dreams. <laughs> we, we didn't have a chance. We were, we were dead in the water. So um, I wasn't like friends with the whole like, uh, you know, going back to high school like the sports people you know there's stuff like that so it, it was weird to like talk to people that i had never talked to before because they'd come up and like i had a conversation with um uh, sh uh shout out brandon if you're listening uh, about grant williams contract extension he sam you'll love this too he was pissed that they didn't extend them so i was very happy he stood on that side of things well, he's educated then <laughs> exactly jack's high school gives a good education speaking of high school I got to tell you, I have been on this guilty pleasure kick of of like high school type TV shows. Like what? Well, this this obviously is not a high school show, but it's the on HBO. The Sex Lives of College Girls is fantastic. I've seen ads for it, and I, like You've it see, seems yeah. like the type of show that I probably was like, oh, I feel like that's really cringe, but I kind of want to watch it. Like like that no, it's a, it's like actually good. Like yeah, me I've and a couple ads. of my friends from the news station last year when it was the first season stumbled upon it. We were all hanging out, and uh, yeah, one of the guys in his apartment building had this theater room, and we're Ooh. all like looking for something to watch, and they had like HBO logged in, but it was only yeah. the free trial, so that was one of the things we all watched. Fire. And let me tell you, I am very upset that only half the season is out right now. They're doing this thing where they release every week, <laughs> which is yeah, cool because brutal. you have something to look forward to. But I, I did not know. You can't binge. No, I started watch. I watched the first four of this season uh... and I was I was ready. I was like, all right, like we're going to keep going. And then much to my dismay, there was no more episodes. I have to wait. <laughs> very tough. I've been watching the rookie lately cop show. Nathan Fillion, good show on Hulu. Isn't that on that. ABC? Uh, I think so, but it's on Hulu. Like they have the first People, five seasons on Hulu. It's so funny. I don't know who's watching network TV anymore, but there are good shows. People say that yeah. Abbott Elementary is really good. I've, I've seen to watch that too. That. <clears throat> That's another one. Yeah. A lot, a lot of shows to watch, but above all, we have been watching the Celtics. Sam, just because we haven't recorded doesn't mean we haven't been paying attention. Other stuff gets in the way, but we're going to get back to normality, I think, here. Uh, as the Thanksgiving season winds up. How was your Thanksgiving, by the way, Sam? I didn't ask. It was great. I went nowhere. I stayed home. What's the best Everything you could want. Top best Thanksgiving food. Like what's what what do you look forward to most? See, I don't really care for Thanksgiving food that much. I really, really? don't. I'll tell you what. This year my mom made broccoli and okay. cauliflower, and she like did she watched YouTube or something and figured out how to make it. 
and it was really really good so that, this year that was the winner like with what on it you know like it was like obviously not just boiled broccoli no right? no like, it was in the air fryer and she put like oh, spices okay. on it or something i don't know i didn't i didn't <laughs> the way I you said that was like it. yeah my mom had a youtube had a boil and steam no no I was no, like, no wait no. a second because okay 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 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. but i did a friendsgiving which i thought would be a disaster <laughs> because it's me though. and a bunch of other dummies and like <laughs> They're all like, yeah, I'm going to make a ham. I'm going to make a turkey. And I'm like, why? Do, I'm not sure why this has to be this specific food. Like, yeah. I'm like, why don't we just bring something? But it ended up being spectacular. Good. Everybody did there a good go. job with what they made. Much to my surprise, there was egg on my face because I was yeah. wrong. I was happy <laughs> to be wrong, though. I'll tell you, the ham was good. Every, everybody did there a good go. job. The desserts. Uh, the one kid made peanut butter balls with like Rice Krispies Fire. in them, so it was like a crunchy Reese's. Yeah, and Reese's is probably my favorite candy. So that is, to answer That's your question, dope. that is the best thing I've had for Thanksgiving this year because I kind of had two Thanksgivings. The peanut butter ball, yeah, was the best. Um, yeah, my family doesn't usually do mac and cheese on Thanksgiving, but if they did, that would be my answer because it's always mac and a cheese thing. is good. Yeah. You? That's a good one. My, I went to my um my dad's girlfriend's parents, right? And I mean, this isn't like just my like they've been dating obviously for for years, so it's basically mm -hmm. my stepmom at this point. Uh, so we went over there. Um, it was just like traditional Thanksgiving, but I'm a sucker for stuffing. Stuffing's very good, big fan. But like, mm -hmm. if I can pour gravy on the turkey and the potatoes, like gravy is fire. Like I, I'm a big gravy. See, guy. gravy's one of those I things it. I I don't I don't put really? in my body. Nope. I will Won't say though, it. I love gravy. When I came home. My mom and her boyfriend, who again been dating for years, so it's effectively my stepdad at this point, um, had their own Thanksgiving, so they had leftovers. I came home way later, right? Because we had Thanksgiving, quote unquote, dinner at like two, uh, whatever. Because I, I don't know. Um, come home at like seven or, or eight or something. I'm hungry again, and so I take a bunch of their leftovers. You know, turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes. They had turnips or something, which I surprisingly don't mind. Uh, gravy. I put it between two pieces of bread and I stuck it in the air fryer. That was fire. Very good. Recommend air fryer mm -hmm. Thanksgiving sandwich with some gravy in there as well. Uh, that that was probably the best thing I had. The, the combination of it all. That was very good. I enjoyed that. But all right. I think, uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's finish. <laughs> Let's be <laughs> done with that <laughs> before before we get sucked into more Thanksgiving talk. You guys had seven minutes of our own uh, crap, but we Which we can get good. back into Celtics for you. I'm sure yeah, you enjoyed you it. We we, <laughs> we I talk. try and go as long as I can about the non Celtics stuff. Let me tell you, I'm trying to I'm trying I enjoy to improve it. on that. Yeah, it's fun. It's easy. But Celtics talk is just as easy because obviously the Celtics are the best team in basketball. And it's not particularly close, I would argue, right? The Celtics offense, I was just going over it with Sam before the show. Celtics offense, uh, their offensive rating is five points better than the team in second place, which is the Phoenix Suns. The difference between the top offense, which is Boston, and the second place offense is the same between this is the same difference uh of the second place offense and the 19th place offense so the celtics are not just a good offensive team they're not just the best offensive team they're far and away the best offense in the nba and it's not even close uh, and we've seen that so far this season and it's been kind of a treat i mean uh yesterday as we're recording this two days ago as you guys are listening to it they took down the hornets and they had 121 points by the fourth quarter uh heading into the fourth quarter uh, I was there watching the game and it was just like I, in the first quarter, I was just like laughing, right? Like, cause like the offense is just funny. Marcus smart had eight assists in the first quarter finished with the career high 15. We'll talk about him after, but the Celtics offense as a whole is just like comically good. That's like the best word I, I have. No, to it, it actually was funny. Because, like, they were just making everything. Right? <laughs> they just weren't missing. <laughs> I mean, I think at halftime they were shooting, like, 70%. I'm not even trying yeah. to exaggerate. I think it was, no, like, no, 70. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and on the broadcast, because you didn't really hear the broadcast because you were there, it, it, Scout was like, Charlotte's really not playing a bad game. They're just outmatched. Like, this is yeah. unheard of. 140 the points. By the way, the Celtics were not the highest scoring team yesterday. Washington really? was they Washington scored more points. More than no. that, because I was <laughs> no. watching the game with my dad, and he he was like, Washington's like already got like 140 something. I was like, what? I need to look at that now. Washington, they played the Timber. Yeah, they had 142 against the Timbers. Yeah. Wow. My my yeah, dad, let me tell you, he's he's coming up with some fire. I don't know if I well, we haven't go. done a pod since then, but on the pregame, yeah. 
He made a very good point. He says it's to the point where if they lose, you're kind of like, why are they losing? Like they, you're, you're yeah. at the point where like they shouldn't be losing to anybody. They are better than mm-hmm. every team. Now I'm excited to see yep. them play Milwaukee on Christmas because we're going to really see. But I, mm-hmm. I turned and said to him yesterday, I was like, yeah, now it's at the point like if they lose a quarter, you're like, oh, what the hell? Like, yeah. Why, why no. are you getting outscored over 12 minutes? Yeah, the offense is ridiculous, and the defense struggled a little. Like, the Hornets were getting a lot of easy looks in the paint in the first quarter. Celtics turned things up a little bit. They still got some things to work out. We talked about how the defense is improving, but it it doesn't matter. (laughs) When the Celtics put up 45 points, excuse me, in the first quarter alone, it was like 45 to 19 at the end of the first. Um, They're just not missing at first stretches like Malcolm Brogdon is up shooting ridiculous uh, percentage from three. Marcus smart is shooting 50% from three over his last three games. Um, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are obviously Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They're going to be great. Um, But you got Sam Hauser, you got Al Horford who's shooting really well from three. They just don't miss. And I was talking to somebody at the game last night. uh, Apologies for for forgetting your name. I'm going to actually look now because I remember you just. Not only is Jack now too big for the pregame show, but he is too big for the people he is meeting. Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) Come on, come on. No, um, shoot. He's going to edit this out. No, I'm not going to edit it out. I'm going to leave it in. He's getting. Who is it? I knew Gethin. His name is Gethin. G E T H I N. I knew. I remember it was a very Jack. No, no. I remember it was a very. uh, It was a unique name, so I I had to get it. But he works for iHeart Media. I'm sitting here. He turns to me and he goes, "This may not be the most talented team the Celtics have ever had, like that we've seen, right? Like ever. We're talking about like, but it's the most connected." Right. Like they can miss a piece like they can miss Jalen Brown. They can be down Jason Tatum. They can be down Marcus Smart. And you don't really tell the difference for the most part. And I'm not saying that they don't need those players because obviously they become even better. But like the connectivity of this offense, just the, the way they pass the ball, the way they move the ball, the way they make shots, the way they generate open shots is absurd. Like it, it sounds like we're just kind of beating a dead horse when we talk about how good the offense is. But I mean, it's there's like, nothing else to talk about. It, it is. It's, it's nasty. It's, They're nasty. The team is nasty. They, are, they don't. They don't have any business losing to anybody. They they are the best team in the league right now. Seventeen and four. They have the best offense by far. The defense is climbing up. I'm sure we'll get into that. To go along with what you said, the the plug and play ability with this team is mm-hmm. insane because you have so many guys that are just being role players, but realistically could be a, a scoring option on a team. Derek White mm-hmm. could be a, a second third option on a playoff team probably he, he's been so good he's been, he's been so really reliable good. from three he's in the top 15 along mm-hmm. with four other guys in three point percentage that play for the celtics they have five of the top 15 three point shooters in the nba yeah. that is including like the the restriction of like you must have shot this many threes like they are making threes at a high volume at a high percentage and it's no joke craziest thing about that is the the stat that i saw go along with the stat that you just read Celtics have five three-point shooters in the top 15 it is al horford Derek That's white you just said uh, i know no no i'm gonna continue oh. i'm just saying who they are first <laughs> Derek white sam hauser uh this is not in the right order uh Derek white sam hauser al horford grant williams malcolm brogdon i'll get i'll do the right the order you ready team? it's Sorry, hauser horford brogdon yep. oh boy uh I think white, white williams grant. yeah white williams but Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are not in the top 100 three point shooters. That, that, like, and that's not a knock Maybe of Jalen Brown and Jason close. Tatum because they're still shooting fairly well. Like, I think they're both around like 35, 36, 37%. But that's just a testament to how elite the role players around them are at shooting the ball. And this is something the Celtics had been searching for for so, so long. Like, you talk Shemi Ojale, Aaron Neesmith, right? They're like, Brad Wanamaker, even all their all-star Edwards. point guards that they brought in. What did you say? Carson Edwards. He was supposed Carson to be Carson Edwards. <laughs> exactly. Tremont Waters they brought in. Like the amount of Romeo Lankford, the amount of players they brought in in an attempt to develop them into rotational pieces around the Jays, like they've hit on a couple now. And you're starting to reap the rewards. And we didn't even mention Peyton Pritchard, who's been solid for the Celtics too. But they hit on Sam Hauser. They picked him up on drafted. They hit on Gray Williams. They they drafted him late in the first round, right? They brought back Al Horford. They traded for Brogdon and Derek White. They figured it out. And now the offense is looking as good as it is because of the way they figured it out. And it's great. Not to mention great. Brogdon was free. 
Like they gave up nothing for Brogdon. <laughs> yes. The white trade at the time was tough. I mean, I I was like not thrilled because I was a big fan of Richardson and I still think he I was remember. good. I don't think um he's better than White now. White has become an amazing fit on this team. He's been extremely reliable with the catch and shoot this year. His jump shot yeah. is reworked. It looks better. It looks smoother. He's super confident. He's just pulling. He's not he's not worried about if there's a defender there. He is just such a smooth release, and he's not even hitting the rim right now. It's just going straight through, swish. It feels yeah. like every time. He is at the elite level where he shoots it. I think it's going in. I asked you a couple weeks ago, and you said he wasn't there yet. He's there now? He has arrived. I... He's made the <laughs> – There you go. The current standing is – I still have Hauser there. Horford right now is there because he's just been crazy good. Like, he started the season not so great shooting threes. Now he's, and now he's in the top 50 in the league, the second best on the team. So he's just been on an absolute tear. There is right, no so, mistake yeah. about Al Horford. Yeah. So so give me your your Celtics three point rankings in your power eyes, rankings. In, yeah, your three Celtics three point shooters power rankings. Number one is Hauser, then Horford, then White. Okay. okay. Um. Hmm. Wait, Horford's number one. You said or Hauser? He's second. One? He's after. Okay. Hauser. So. Sam Hauser, Al Horford, Derek White, and then you probably got to decide between Brogdon and I think Grant it's Grant. <clears throat> okay. Even though Brogdon's been on fire lately, he's been like a quiet, uh, like yes, high percentage shooter. Yes, I, I feel like he's, he's had a lot of times around. where I've been like, wow, like can't believe that one didn't go in. Like he was open, <laughs> and he still missed. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. the kind of thing where. So, yeah, I guess he's number Jays. five, but I would still like put like Tatum ahead of him, which is okay. which is a lot because I really don't like when Tatum shoots threes a lot of the time because it's like <laughs> uh he's really not like doing yeah, everything he can here. He's kind of settling, but last mm-hmm. night he came out and made like his first three. Like he did three in a row, not just his first three point attempt, like three threes. He made all three of them. Got you. Yeah, okay. I, I respect those right After that, that it's all a blur. I mean <laughs> All the same, yeah. same thing, effectively. Uh, okay, I got you there. Um, we kind of talked about the bench a little bit. We had that on our list, but we kind of effectively what the three point shooting thing is. Uh, we can talk about Marcus. Well, we should, Smart, let, let's let's stop on the bench for a minute because I wrote about it today. Okay, so I, I have talk, some stats. Let's talk for you. How about that? Hit I texted me with the stats Jack today, and I said, Jack, how do I look to see who the top bench scoring teams in the league are? And I finally figured it out. Like, there's a thing you can toggle that just says just bench. Yeah, so bench I found it. Uh, believe it or not, the Celtics like 13th or something like that in bench score. Really? They have 33 okay. a game. However, the, the thing that is going to be like, okay, yeah, I was right about this is they are the second most efficient bench yeah, behind only Portland. And from three, they are the most efficient bench at 44%. And that's by Oof. six points over number two. Which is as Chicago. in forty four versus thirty eight percent? Yes, is the difference. They wow. are six okay. percent better than the next best team. Wow! So that reliability from the bench scores makes it so much easier on Joe Missoula if he has to rest somebody. If somebody Missoula is ball. injured, they don't feel as pressured. It adds into yeah. the um, next guy up mentality on the team that we yeah. talked about yeah, earlier. Yeah. To where you can plug and play guys, and it doesn't matter because they're all so efficient. You can trust those guys and they all trust each other, which goes into the ball movement. And it makes it easier on the stars because when they're in there, everybody around them can shoot and they're not going to be able to, ha- they're not going to have to face as much health defense because the defense can't leave these guys. Everybody's benefiting from it in all kinds of different ways, multiple ways for some guys. Yeah, no, I mean, 100%. I, I have no counter argument because there really isn't a counter argument to what you're saying. This all expensive. Destroyed. Absolutely Nothing. phenomenal. No devil's advocate from Jack, which he loves. <laughs> well, he loves the devil's advocate. I do. I'm a big devil's advocate but guy, but like. Well, the thing is, that, I'm usually the anti three point guy. So there, he's really got nothing. <laughs> no, but like, what is the devil's advocate? for that right like you're just correct like no it's just fast been it's literally I'm, I'm telling you statistics exactly and the biggest thing for me is i want to point to this the first year jason tatum made the all-star team which you can sort of count as the first year of him sort of starting to take over as that number one option for the celtics right uh was 2019 2020 which obviously Before got cut COVID. up by the bubble <clears throat> yeah pre-covid and <laughs> some during covid play but i want to read you who their top bench guys were that season 
<laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I want to obviously. I want to do it. You want to guess? Brad guess? Wanamaker, Ojale yep. was there. Yeah. Uh, Tice was off the bench that year. Yes, he Ains was. Wasn't around uh, no. anymore. J- Daniel Tice was the full time starter then. Oh, he was a starter. That's right. Because Horford yep. left. You're absolutely right. Oof. Yep. Who was the backup big? So, Grant I'll was playing the backup big. <laughs> he was. I'll tell you the starters at least. Tice, Kemba, Tatum, Brown, and then Hayward and Smart kind of split it. Like Smart played. 40 of yep. his 60 games in the starting lineup. So I'm going to count him as like a starter effectively. So those are the six quote unquote starters past that. You got Brad Wanamaker. You got Shemi. You got Grant Williams. There is another one. I mean, Langford was two, on that team, but he wasn't playing. Nope. He didn't play. He only appeared in 32 games. Tremont uh, Waters Vin- was on that team. Tremont Waters only because played in 11 was, games. There was talk of like, oh, they want him. You know, people wanted him to overtake Wanamaker. As the next guy yep. up, uh, I mean, Carson Edwards was on that team, but he wasn't playing. Mr. Ennis Freedom played 58 games. Oh, Ennis I Freedom. forgot he was on that team. That's who the backup was. Yep. Uh, Rob played 29 games. Right. In limited Rob minutes. was J- Javante back. Green got a couple stints here and there for the Celtics. Uh, but yeah, Shem- Shemi Ojale played 69 games for the Celtics that year. 15 minutes a night. There was Brad no make it. He had potential. Mm hmm. He did. He there truly was. had potential. There his, was. His, there was. His role was something that he could be able to fit into. He just never did. There was. I tweets and I've seen people, excuse me, say a lot. Um, Brad Shemi Ojale walked so Grant Williams could run, which is I, I th- effectively. It's true. <laughs> very he true. was Grant Williams is what they hoped Shemi could be. Yes, Shemi, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, Wanamaker. Uh, was the seventh highest minutes getter on? He was the seventh man in the rotation that year. The seventh man in the rotation this year. What is it? <clears throat> He's Derek White, Brogdon, <laughs> right? Let me take it. Let me double check. Let, let's compare it that way, I guess. The, the, and again, this is Tatum's first year <clears throat> as an All Star versus this year, where the Celtics, by the way, are seventeen and four, which is. About as good as you could ask for, Sam. I know you can say they should have won all the games, and they they were they should they have should have won, won all the games. games. They literally should sure. have won all the games. But we know that's not possible, and so you there's there's not much more you could have asked for so far from the Celtics. They played very well. But <clears throat> comparisons, um, one two one two, both Tatum, both Brown, uh, Smart and Al Horford were both in the top five as well. Obviously, Hayward and Kemba are gone, and <clears throat> we can say they were effectively replaced. Um, by uh, or Horford, I guess here. But to put it in perspective, when you get down into the into the grid of it, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on that 2019-2020 Celtics team: Tice, Wanamaker, Freedom, Williams, Grant Williams, and Ojale. This year, six, seven, eight, nine, ten: Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, Luke, uh, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, Blake Griffin down there and Grant Williams up to number five and Robert Williams hadn't played, hasn't played a single yeah. game for the Celtics. Like the difference is absolutely ridiculous. And you're seeing why the Celtics have the best, you know, depth in the league. Is that too, too much to say? Do we, do no. we think they have the best depth in the league? You think it's, it's not true? Even close. <laughs> okay. Who's close? Who's well, close. Once they get healthy, I think the Clippers are close. All right. I, I don't, I, I think that is a team that could be close. I think Fair. the, um, I think the Bucks have some okay depth. I think there's a solid as well. You talk about Bobby Portis off the close. bench. Bobby. Well, once they get healthy, Bobby Portis, Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton. I think they've got decent depth down there. Javon Carter's having a really good season. I'm not saying they're better than the Celtics. I'm just saying if we're <clears throat> looking at other teams around the league who could potentially stack up, um, the Pelicans have some decent depth. I, I agree that I'm. Sh- this is where the devil's advocate me is coming out, but uh, the Celtics bench, my point is, well, I asked, they've come for, I a just, long I asked way. for examples. I truly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, know. Yeah. I truly don't know. I, I don't think, think anybody's close, and I'm kind of right. I think that the best options you got are the best potential, you know, teams to look at Pelicans, Grizzlies, Clippers, Bucks. I think those are the only really ones you could look at and say, okay, <clears throat> maybe this team has better depth. But even then, it's kind of hard uh, to surpass the Celtics on that list. I mean, so. Brogdon and Derek White are better than anybody on those benches. By far, yeah, anybody, yeah, they're better. Yeah, they're better. You can make that argument. Grant Williams could. might be better than them. That's true. He's starter now, though. He's starter. He's right not now. a starter when Rob comes back. Are you sure? Yes, positive. Okay. All right, I was just asking. They're gonna do. I'm double just asking. Days. 
Who's going to the bench? Not the Grant bench. Horford. Rob for now. I think Rob for st- to start at least. Well, when Rob's be... like 100 percent Grant. Okay, be sure. Yeah, yeah. I got you. That makes sense. Um, all right. Do we want to talk about Marcus Smart first, or do we want to talk about the fun trade rumor that you brought up? <laughs> do Marcus <laughs> not Smart, rumor because this is okay. actually like substance that people. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. All right. Uh, I think one of our last. Uh, not shorts, but like the, the clip videos we do, which, you know, shameless plug in the middle of the, the show. Go check out the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel. How About Them Celtics podcast on YouTube. Hit us up with a subscriber. We're almost at 150. We're climbing there. Road to 1,000, a long road, but <clears throat> eventually we'll get there. Um, One of the last things we talked about was how great Marcus Smart has been or, or had been the last time we recorded, and he is continuing to be amazing. He put up a career-high 15 assists against the Hornets. Only played three quarters. He did not play a single minute in the fourth. So he had 15 assists through three quarters. Uh, I actually asked my first press conference questions uh, as media the other day. Uh, worked up the courage. I asked him, or asked Joe Missoula. About it. I'm a sky it. guy. It's, it's a true thing. I don't blame you in the slightest. I, love I wanted the to observe. Balls. That is valid. I wanted to observe the first few times but i very respectable by you by the way exactly thank you technically you Um, are entering a new workplace and the proper way to enter a workplace is by not being heard exactly people shouldn't know you unless (laughs) unless they already know you (laughs) if you're coming in a workplace and everybody's like dude why won't this guy stop talking that's a problem (laughs) just in case you didn't know there are people that need to hear this there are legitimately people that need to hear that yeah, embarrassing moment. Uh, I wasn't gonna say this on here, but I don't think it matters that much. As well, you walk in like hallways back to the press conference room <clears throat> in the in the back hallways, right? Yeah. And so people pass you. There, there's these really skinny hallways uh, where you have to get go back to get there. And I pass someone, right? You know, just says, "Hey, how you doing?" I say, "Hey, how you doing?" Be a nice guy. Takes me three seconds to realize that it was Brad Stevens. I was like, "Shoot, I should have said hello," because because like by the time I realized who it was, but you said, "How are you like, doing?" <clears throat> Of course, he said hi. I yeah. said, "Hey, how are you?" Yeah, so you, That's you, normal. you know, no, 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 you handled it perfectly. <laughs> okay, okay. Because he's well, probably like, "Wow, that guy is cool." He didn't even care that I was Brad Stevens. Like, I know, but I, I've been trying. If you to realized it was Brad myself. Stevens, you would have been nervous. You, you weren't nervous. That's the point. Of That's not. good. I was nervous when I realized who I said hi to after. Yeah, but you, I didn't you realize. weren't nervous saying <laughs> hi to him. If you, know, if you realized that was Brad Stevens, it would have not went as well as of it course. did. I'm telling you right now, it would not. Again. It was a very brief, hi, how are you doing, pass in the hallway, which was normal. Uh, next time, though, I, I want to introduce myself. Yeah, I know now he knows I, you're I'm cool. Like, he's like, this guy's not going to berate exactly. me. He's not going to attack me. He's not going to ask me a bunch <laughs> of dumb questions <laughs> yes, about yes. being a fan or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, he's cool. He's the, hey, how you doing guy? He's not. He's not uh, <laughs> but I thought that was funny, though, because <laughs> pass right by him. Anyways, uh, point is, I asked Joe Missoula uh, a question. Um, I said, hey, Marcus Smart. Obviously, Joe, you've been with him for – sorry, I have the hiccups again. Been with him over the years during your time in Boston. His role has changed a lot in the last couple of years. <clears throat> Full-time point guard last season. Now this year, he's kind of picking up the pace as a playmaker. Uh, and Joe basically said, I have full trust in him to run the offense. And the biggest thing is he's seeing the possession before it happens. And I think you see that a lot uh, with Smart this year, obviously, at least as a passer, um, because he's been one of the best – point guards in the league this year or at least lately, fifth right? assist. it's not not a scary thing to say it's true in the nba in the nba yeah he's fifth in assists in the league no. total assists he's fifth. total this season like average or total total okay. i saw it on twitter today really i didn't know it was that great yeah marcus smart is fifth in the league in assist wow yeah okay. he's really good yeah <laughs> there you go yes he is. there's still people that like hate him and, and like I still have a friend that will tell me he's not good. Ray that comes to basketball, he tells me he's not good. He's I sent him a message. So he said, "He said I'll I'll believe it if he does it against a real team." <laughs> so he said to me, "He's done it against real teams <laughs> this year." I mean, in right? fairness, like it was it was Plumley and the boys yesterday, but like well, of course, but fifteen assists is also a like ridiculous number of assists. No, it is. Not it, like, uh, you're like, right. I'm I'm not denying it. I'm just saying it was it was Plumley Ubre and then all the fellas off the street. <laughs> Plumley and the fe- <laughs> no, but Marcus Smart's been one of the best passers in the league this year. Uh, he had twelve assists against Memphis. Did Ray forget about that? Memphis is a good team. Uh, I'm 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 looking at others. I mean, 
He had seven in the opener. I mean, against this Philly. is worst case scenario for him. It's okay. Against... <laughs> True. This is He's this is he went time. to sleep and had a, a nightmare. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, Marcus Smart is fifth in assists, which is crazy. I didn't realize that. Thank you for enlightening me, Sam. Um, but Marcus Smart has been amazing this year uh, with the ball in his hands. Joe Mazzulla said he completely trusts him during the offense. Marcus Smart talked about it during his prof- press conference. He says, uh, Abby Chen asked, he goes, uh, she goes, excuse me, um, how are you seeing the floor in Smart? He goes, with x-ray vision, which is just like kind of true. Like the way he's passing, the way yeah, he's Yeah, I saw that in your headline. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great quote. Um, and there was a video on Twitter that came out of uh, after the Luke Cornett uh alley oop which by the way fire of him like doing the bird thing and smart pointing towards the camera somebody on twitter said it looks like they're in the backyards uh kids playing superheroes because they were like kind of pointing and like doing the bird thing which is funny um i asked him about that and he goes uh it just he's effectively said it starts in the locker room like we're just like there for each other and we're just a close-knit group this year not that we didn't have that same you know fondness of each other last year but we've got more guys now and it's just like they're having fun it's and Marcus Smart is a big part of that. And I think the reason he's improved so much as a playmaker the last year is you have to remember last year was the first time the Celtics ever trusted him to put the ball in his hand. And he averaged a career high in assists. He won defensive player of the year, and that still wasn't good enough for people. And now this year, like you said, he's top five in total assists so far. He's averaging 7.5 on the season, which is by far a career high. I think almost like 1.6 higher than he's ever averaged before. And he's leading the best team in the league as their starting point guard. And when I say leading, I mean leading. Obviously, Tatum and Brown are going to get most of the credit because they're the best players. But Marcus Smart is absolutely leading this team. And it's like he's been so, so, so good. It sucks because Bobby put out a list the other day of like all these players in the Eastern Conference, like they could be all stars. And he put Smart at the bottom. I saw this. And like, it just sucks that there's so much talent at the guard position in the East yeah. because it's really not realistic for him to get on, but mm-hmm. this is the best he's ever played. And by far we were raving last year about how much he'd improved as a playmaker yeah. and, and how much he's shaken the bad habits this year. He's taken a mega jump. We talk about guys taking jumps all the time, especially like Jalen Brown, who tends to come back every year better at something. Mm-hmm. This is unbelievable. Yeah, X-ray vision is absolutely right. He has crazy vision. He makes crazy passes. It's an insane thing to watch. And he's not even turning the ball over, really. Yeah, he, he's fantastic. And he he trusts the guys around him like he should. I mean, they're all good mm-hmm. at shooting threes, so why wouldn't you? He's making the extra pass now. The thing that people always said he didn't do, he's actually shooting pretty decent right now. I believe he's shooting a career high from the field at the very least at 44%. I don't know. Yeah, if, career if high, 44 is one. Career high. It's pretty close. Three point percentages would be his second best ever behind that 2018 19 season. He's and, shooting 30. Don't forget, this year. If, if you want to like cherry pick stats too, cut out like the first like four games because he was really bad. Yep. He, he was really like not good to start this season. And now yeah, he he's really struggled. Filthy. He has figured it out he's playing at the highest level he's ever played at he's leading mm-hmm. the team to the best le- uh, record in the league as a starting point guard still a top-notch defender yeah he's still, still deep boy does he make he's phenomenal could you make it all do NBA we want to team? talk about this <clears throat> do we want to talk about all-stars right now quick since we no no i don't want to because then that goes into me not knowing stuff but like no, no i well. seriously <laughs> I wonder if this team like really pops off. You can make an all NBA team as like the third team. I don't think so. He's only averaging 11 points. And of course I'm, I'm like, that's true. The point, the points is brutal. I saw somebody on Reddit today, like post the stats between him and drew holiday. And like, they were like, Mm -hmm. we need to start dialogue and like all the stats are the same, but holiday averages like six more points. (laughs) Yeah. The defense might not be as good. and, And all the other things that we all rave about all the time, but I really don't know what the point of that post was. It was kind of bad. Like, I was like, what, yeah. what's going on here? However, yeah, the assists are crazy. And I think that 7.5 number is going to go up. I truly do. I think mm-hmm. he's just been on a tear and he's figured it out. Whatever he's doing is working. He's having a 15 point, uh, 15 point, 15 assist night without Jalen Brown playing. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, uh, he, he's phenomenal. There, there's not really much else you can say about it other than he's been the third best player on this team. Was that would we put him third? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's uh, super controversial. Well, there's All a lot of good players. Guards have been playing really well. <laughs> White and Brogdon both have been averaging about the same numbers, about like 14 points, four assists around that. Both shooting really well. Mm-hmm. But Marcus is the one doing the most of the distributing. He's he's really in charge of that. Yeah, no, <clears throat> it's been great. But in terms of guards, like you said in the East, just we don't have to like <clears throat> full on talk about the All Star conversation. But you can only have a max of six guards on a yeah, team. Like you have Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell. Kyrie, mm-hmm. he's playing games, so he's probably going to get in because they all love him. Uh, Harden is in the East. I, mean, I have I the list here. If he's going to get in because he's been kind of injured and in and out of the lineup. Yeah, I, I have it here. Harden, Kyrie, like you said, if they play enough games. Um, Garland. Trey Young, Trey Young, Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, DeJounte Murray's in the East now. Mm-hmm. Tyrese Halliburton, the Pacers are good, and he's been playing. Yeah, great. Halliburton. You know, Halliburton might be the. I agree. No, <laughs> yes, he's up there. He's up there. He's no, like, like I was gonna say, like the best point guard in the league. He, he's, uh, you're not far off. Like he's definitely up there. You probably take Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, yeah. but like Halliburton's knocking on the door of top five. We'll put it that way. Um, Jalen Brown count that as a guard in years past. I know the Knicks aren't great, but Jalen Brunson's putting together a great season. He's got an argument. <clears throat> like th- there's a lot of guys. Marcus Smart would have to fight through. It would probably take Sucks. like. It, it would probably take like. Drew Holiday, we didn't even mention. The Bucks are really good. Um, the Celtics would probably have to be like close to a forty win team by the All Star break, like right? Which like is possible. 40, I mean, it, uh, I'm not saying it's not. Games, but... You win. You've won seventeen. Twenty one games. You yeah. won seventeen. Very possible, but it, it's not. It's gonna be an uphill battle. I'll put it that way for Marcus Smart to get into the All Star team. Uh, but anyways, um, we can move on. We can talk about, uh, and I, I'm not going to take any slack for it either because you brought it up. Uh, I forget where it originated. Do you know where the Anthony Davis, Robert Williams thing originated, Sam? I don't know what the source was. I saw it on NBA Central on Twitter, and I think they said an anonymous executive said, I don't remember which side he was advocating to do the deal. I think it was the Lakers. Oh, it was Colin say, Cowherd. It was an analyst. Oh, all right. Well, regardless. <laughs> well, regardless. It's we out can talk there. about it. He said, what did he say exactly? I want to find like the He quote. said like the Lakers should sell high because how how many more games is he going to play? Like he's not going to play in every game for the rest of the season. They should mm-hmm. sell high on Anthony Davis. But he the effectively problem is, argued his argument now that I'm looking at it was so foolish too. No, it's dumb. <laughs> it is dumb. He said they're going to have a Giannis issue so they should trade for AD to guard him. No, they're Even not. Though... Well, they might, but everyone's <laughs> going to have a Giannis issue. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that's not a unique thing to the side. I would argue Anthony Davis isn't guarding Giannis. He doesn't exactly. want to play against argue... the big boys. He doesn't want to play no. center. Not that Giannis the is a center. They probably have the second best matchup for Giannis in terms of like a Who's straight one on one. I'd bam at bio, maybe. I okay. think Miami. He, he could fair. probably <clears throat> be up there. And I, true. he could potentially argue Ben Simmons, but he's been having he's yeah, been better. Ben's... Um it, in terms of pure defender, I'm saying Ben Simmons is you can't knock him as a defender. But I mean Al Horford, Grant Williams, <laughs> like they can handle him and they did last year. Uh, and I guess PJ Tucker, but <clears throat> Jason Tatum there too. Like uh, th- th- I think the Celtics are fine, but effectively Colin Cowherd suggests the Celtics trade Robert Williams for Anthony Davis. Right, the the Lakers get Rob, more financial freedom. Uh, the Celtics get Anthony Davis. Obviously, it wouldn't work more for a one for one deal. Exactly, you'd have to throw something else in there. It's pretty foolish, regardless. I don't think any Celtics fan would do it. I mean, well, if you, if the money wasn't a thing, would you trade Rob straight up for Anthony Davis? Probably not. <laughs> just just because, yeah. like, one, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Meaning by that, one, the Celtics are nasty without either one of them. Two, they've proven to be good in the past with Rob Williams, and he has a defined yep. role on the team. If you bring in Anthony Davis, he's probably going to want to do similar things to Horford. And whether he's mm-hmm. as good, uh, it's not looking like it, especially shooting threes. He's not as good at it. So what's the point of having him, in my opinion? And if he's going to be hurt, this this is all without having to pay him. Mm-hmm. To me, which is the biggest issue. The whole The whole great thing about Rob is... He only makes like 12 million. So if he's injured, 
yeah, it sucks. Like I'd love if Rob was playing right now and he's fully healthy, but you're not like eating up 30 million on that. You're eating up 12. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree with you completely. And it's tough because I feel like this argument is similar to the, would you trade Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant? In a sense, it's obviously, true. I think the gap between Jalen and KD is smaller than the gap between Rob and AD. But at the same time, you haven't really seen the best of Rob, I don't think, at least. And if I you have, like, if you have, you're still getting an all defensive second team center. You're still getting a defensive player of the year candidate. And who knows if Rob played the full season, he might have won defensive player of the year. And that's not a knock on Marcus, just that they had two defensive player of the year caliber players on the team. <laughs> that's how good Rob was. And that's the how only, good Rob can the only be. argument you can really make for Anthony Davis is okay. And this doesn't make sense with trading Rob, but he could be like the Horford successor. That's the only be. thing because we, we've be. talked about that a fair amount and it's been on Twitter. Who's, who's going to be the next guy. Who's going to be the next Horford. People want it to be grant. Grant's not big enough. It's just clear. He's not big enough. He's grant. He's not Horford mm-hmm. and he's grant is good, but he's not Horford. He's not the same player. Um, Anthony Davis is one of those guys that could make sense in that role. Mm-hmm. He can kind of shoot. He can kind of defend. Like he do phenomenal all defender, and he's in he's his prime, <laughs> right? Defender. If he decides to want to defend the big guys he's and is playing really well healthy. this year, he's yeah. brought it around. <laughs> and good really for well. him. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You don't need that. You don't need to throw another ego in the mix. You don't need to throw yep. in the injury risk of someone that would be playing a big role for you. I mean. Why and you? like you said, I mean, <clears throat> coming back to realism, coming out of our, you know, if you could do it just with this without considering this money, right? Like that, yeah. that's the clear that's thing that's going <laughs> to deter you from doing it. Not only from the perspective of <clears throat> having to pay Anthony Davis, because you're going to have to pay Anthony Davis continuously. You're going to have three max contract players on the roster. Um, <clears throat> and no matter how good Rob gets, I don't think he's ever going to become a max player, which is benefit benefits the Celtics. Um, but. Also, I don't know, like Gobert's we said, making the max money. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not wrong. I, I, we'll see because I Rob will probably get 25 a year down the line, which will not be max anymore. But it sounds like it. <clears throat> but the point is, like we said when we started the conversation, no matter what, you're gonna have to. It, like, even if you want to do this trade, you'd have to give up something else. <clears throat> you'd have to give up Rob and Derek White, or Rob and Malcolm mm-hmm. Brogdon, or Rob and Al Horford, or Rob and Marcus Smart, right? Like, it's not going to be a Rob for Anthony Davis trade. And obviously, we understand how foolish this entire conversation is because it's never going to happen. And well, also, the point of it was it from the Lakers. Happen. I don't think he was saying <laughs> exactly. the Celtics should do it. Yes. <laughs> and if you're the Lakers, I still think it's stupid. <laughs> I still think it's terrible because as much as we're arguing the Celtics shouldn't do it, Anthony Davis is still an all-star. He's still an all-NBA player, and obviously he's had his health issues, but over the past like 10 days, he's averaging like 30 and 12, right? Like he's Well, he's also basketball. literally the only thing they have. <laughs> sure, sure, but they're also winning, right? And this isn't going to turn into like, oh, good for the Lakers, but like it, you can't turn to Bly and die when Anthony Davis is probably playing his best basketball since the bubble. And they lost right? like he's play- <laughs> Sure. But Anthony Davis is playing really well and <clears throat> trading him for Robert Williams. And then especially to the point where you're going to say, OK, Rob, you're going to be our what second leading scorer now. Like That's just not what Rob does. And eventually down the line for the Celtics, maybe he can get up there to 15 points a game. Right. You throw him enough lobs, <clears throat> have him. Yeah, he's not creating Grant. And exactly. Exactly. He's not creating for himself. And obviously having LeBron and Russell Westbrook on the team, you're going to have opportunities to catch lobs. But. The whole conversation, I just think, is a bit stupid. And, it, I mean, it's it's good to talk about for a podcast, which is why we're talking about it. But, like, I don't think the Celtics should do it, nor do I think the Lakers would do it. I think it's a dead-end trade. And, I mean, if you're the Lakers and you say, okay, if the Celtics say yes to giving us Rob a pick and Derek White, then maybe you talk because that gives you some depth. It gives you some flexibility in tradable contracts. But, like you're giving up Anthony Davis and he's been arguably your best player so far this year. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, okay, Colin, co- co- Colin got us and he, What's he gave job? us content too. <laughs> exactly. He's good at it. Um, I think oh, we can talk about Blake Griffin a little bit. If you want to talk about Blake Griffin, because he had a, uh, a highlight. Um, he had a good game. He did. Yeah, he had he a solid game. Basketball. He did. He had what nine points, four rebounds. Was that the final stat line for him? It's kind of funny, like <laughs> that he doesn't play set. regularly. I'm not saying he's like real good or anything, but when he plays, he's serviceable and he plays hard. He's not bad. 
He's not bad. He's he's solid on the uh, uh the glass. Uh, the one place he does get beat, he gets beat on defense way too easily. And I know the Which Celtics as a team, play. exactly. Celtics as a team haven't been great offensive uh, defensive team. Excuse me this year, but um, he him in particular, he gets beat like off the dribble and uh, can't really guard the pick and roll too well. But yeah, in his start, played twenty one minutes, just over, <clears throat> shot four or five from the field, one of two from three, made the Celtics' first bucket of the game and a three pointer. TD Garden went wild. Uh, nine points, four rebounds, two of them offensive. Um, <clears throat> Obviously had the highlight dunk where Derek White threw him a lob and he kind of turned back the clock. Um, had another good dunk that got called off because some like sc- illegal screen. <laughs> something I thought like he that. had but two dunks. Maybe he did. Maybe he had a third one that got called off. But <clears throat> Blake Griffin put together a good show. Um, exactly that. He put on a show. <laughs> he entertained the garden. Um, yeah, he played well. He looked good in his minutes. Uh, and after the game, when asked about it, Joe Mazzulla effectively said, like, he's just a good person, right? Like, he went on this thing. He's like, well, I mean, yeah. And then John Corrales called him out. He goes, is that what you look for? You look for their character? And, like, not in a, a, a jerk way, but he was, like, asking it. And Joe, Joe was like, I don't even mean to correlate those two. I just think we have a lot, a lot of good guys <clears throat> on the team, so I just talk about that. Um, and he, he was talking about how Blake is, like uh, – uh, just a good locker room guy and obviously he can still play a little bit he's not going to get a ton of minutes but um he can get out there and he can start when he needs to and i mean luke cornett was awesome off the bench too so uh yeah I, I was happy with blake's performance i thought he played well yeah he was fine yeah n- not much i guess there's not much else <laughs> not much to, to say about it but <laughs> i did want thing. to before we wrap up, I do want to talk about <laughs> a quote from Malcolm Brogdon because I think mm. you'll appreciate it. Yeah, I, I don't know Let's if you saw ahead. this. So <clears throat> after the game, um, somebody asked Brogdon about having perspective from the outside, and he talked about him and Blake, <clears throat> and he basically said just about appreciating where they are. Marcus, Jason, Jalen, and Grant, they haven't seen other teams. There's a lot of good here, and I remind the guys of that when time gets tough. Uh, when you're on one team with one organization for so long, there's always a wonder of what it's like somewhere else. So I try to get guys not to wonder because this is special. And I, that, that should tell you all you need to know. Like <clears throat> Brogdon has played for the Pacers and the Bucks. Um, Griffin has played for what the Clippers, the Pistons uh, and the Nets. And for Brogdon to say, like, I try not to get guys to think about what other places are like and f- to let their minds wander. Yeah, and wonder what those things are like because this is special. Like to hear him talk about the Celtics organization like that and this Celtics team, like that should tell you how much the Celtics and their players believe in this group. It, it was really good to hear. Boy, Anthony Davis' dad said it, they're mean. <laughs> exactly. Which so, is another take, reason take why that. that trade that we talked about can't happen <laughs> because his dad thinks they're mean. True. <laughs> never happened no, it was good to hear though it was really good to hear it, it was a good uh it was a good quote at least no, it should tell quote. you that the Celtics do things come on <laughs> here, here i am he said something really like good about the franchise and thoughtful <laughs> it. and i'm just like making fun of anthony <laughs> davis's dad well he was a prick he was a prick during that saga i remember like shut up <laughs> shut up i do remember but um I think that's all we had. Is, is that what we all, all we had to talk about today? Um, anything else you wanted to bring up? I mean, we haven't talked since the Bulls lost. I don't really know what else there's to say about it. They lost. They kind of just played poorly. Like that's gonna happen. It sucked, but they've bounced back since then with a four game win streak. So it's hard to stay mad at them too long because so far when they've played poorly, they've answered it really well. They I don't think they've lost two in a row yet. <laughs> they definitely haven't. I don't think any of those losses to the Bulls or Cavs were in a row. Nope, not two. Um, but they've only lost four games, two in the Cavs to overtime, two against the Bulls in regulation. Uh, they just hate playing the Central Division, I guess. Mm. Um, but they're playing real well. I will say, though, Sam, this next stretch for the Celtics is going to be a really big test for them. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have this a lot written of great down. Games. I have the upcoming road trip written down. We can save this because we'll probably do one on the weekend or Friday night after the Heat yeah. game. Yeah. And then we'll really have some uh, stuff to get into. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. We can talk about that and we can talk about all stars too at some point, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's good then. I, I think we can save the road trip talk and stuff. I will be at this, the heat game Friday night though. So it would have to be, I, I wouldn't be home till late, but we mm. could do Saturday afternoon or something like that. Mm. We can figure it out. <clears throat> but 
Uh, anything else you want to bring up before we get out of here? Uh, I'll save complaints, I guess. No, I'll talk about this because it was today. All right, all right, hit me. The World Cup was today. <laughs> I don't like yeah. that they have American people calling the games. I really don't. Really? I really Why? hate watching soccer with guys that don't have English accents talk, calling games. It just doesn't <laughs> sound right. It doesn't That's sound right. Complaint. They're better at no, it than mean, we are. <laughs> I understand it. It's their game. Watch. Well, yeah, but it's the Americans playing, so they. I don't like, care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm sure you could find it. I will say the guy doing the game was not bad. At the end of the game, when mm. when it was like the hundredth minute, because they wanted the nine minutes extra time, then there was ridiculous in extra time. He had me, he had me on the edge of my seat. I got to tell you, he did a good job. <laughs> it's a good game. He was good. It was a good game, but it just doesn't sound right. I got to tell you, don't love it. <laughs> Don't don't That's love funny. hearing American guys call soccer, and they do big it, win they, though. Yeah, big win, big win. I, they they I almost saw. Blew it. I started watching at halftime, so I'm a fake fan. It was good. <laughs> Did watch. Good. They almost had Did two uh, before the half, but the guy was offside. But I don't. I don't think he was really yeah, offside. Yeah. I think they got it wrong. Ooh, I'll have to go watch. I didn't actually see that. <laughs> don't watch. All right, but um, also funny story for me. Uh, my mom was asking for Christmas ideas and stuff. And I like, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> so I'm a Brentford fan, you know, even though I struggle to keep up because of other stuff. So I asked for a few jerseys. I'm like, Oh, these are three players. I like, uh, I like, um, oh, I forget one. I know I asked for an Mbumo Jersey who got compared to LeBron. If you've seen those memes, he was the guy on the, Oh, the, he's uh, the guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's, uh, he got compared to LeBron. And I also asked for an Ivan, uh, Ivan Tony Jersey who uh, if you've seen any recent news about uh, Yvonne Tony, I don't think I'll be enjoying that Jersey very much <laughs> anytime soon. Um, right. Well, here we go. We're not going to, you don't know what crazy. happened with you on Tony. I'm going to go on Twitter. <laughs> All right. Let me know when you find out uh, about Yvonne Tony, because like I said, it is uh, <clears throat> not looking like he's going to be. Oh, a consistent <laughs> base at their club. Uh, yeah. It looks like he, he's leaving. <laughs> he got busted. Oh. He got he he bet on football 238 times. <laughs> he got caught in mm. 238 cases of gambling uh on football in the prem or in championship or whatever. Uh <laughs> so he is uh is he officially leaving the club? Do you see that? No, that that must be old then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he got caught <clears throat> gambling. Look up like Yvonne Tony betting or something. The other one is Rico Henry, by the way. He's he's a defender for, for Brentford that I like. I forgot, but <clears throat> yeah, you, I'm not big on I Christmas. Know. I don't care for Christmas. I knew this. I don't get it. I've always been big on I Christmas. Don't care That's for just it. how I was I, I truly <laughs> don't care for it. Everybody That's likes crazy. it too much. I love Christmas. Christmas is great. We got it's our Christmas tree. Hat. I love Christmas. Big Celtics are anyway. leave me alone. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh yeah, we appreciate y'all for listening. Check us out on YouTube. Sam's going to plug it too, but I always plug the YouTube whenever I get the chance because it's growing. Well, how about them Celtics podcast on YouTube? If you're watching on YouTube, which you should be, subscribe and you can see at the bottom of our screen all of the other ads, which Sam will cover, but I'll let him do that. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, you're on YouTube, watching on, hopefully, how about them Celtics pod instead of Guy Boston Sports, but we're on both. Uh, make sure you subscribe. So how about them Celtics pod? Leave a like. Jack mentioned it earlier. We are climbing the ladder. We're trying to get up as high as we can with the subs. And we're making some progress. Who doesn't love that? If you're not watching, you're on some streaming service, which is absolutely fine. Make sure you follow us there. Leave a nice comment. Five stars. Whatever the hell they do there. I don't know. I don't, I don't leave reviews. But here follow I am. Follow on Spotify. You do, so. Follow on Spotify and leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple. But there you go. That's That's what it is. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Jack told you what to do. Uh, also, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. How about them C's? You'll get the shorts there as well as on YouTube. And people like them. So so definitely follow us. Good content there. Mm -hmm. uh, also follow Jack at Jack's Money NBA. He's doing all kinds of writing and stuff and working hard, and you'll get all of it. You also have him spoiling the game for you. If you're like me yesterday, when you were at the game, spoiling it for me. Man. They Sorry, had not man. even cut to the jump ball yet, and I knew Blake Griffin hit the opening three. 
<laughs> well, NBC's got to step up the broadcast. I'm not taking the blame for that. No, uh, it's the streaming. And then you can follow <laughs> me to hear me complain or see the articles I write at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go.